Figma has launched one of its biggest updates ever at its config event a few hours ago and people were thrilled because there are a lot of useful as well as a lot of fascinating features they have introduced. Let's take a look at all these updates and some updates that they didn't even show at the co config are also in this video. While you're watching, let me know in the comments which is your favorite feature out of all these big updates. All right, so the first update is dev mode and Figma really focused on this last night. Dev mode will be a small, cute little switch on the top right hand corner if you click on it it switches into a separate mode altogether in this mode you'll have a lot of details in the right inspect panel where you will have the code the measurements the colors and styles and everything in a much better format than it used to be it almost gives you this web flow inspector vibe apart from this there's something special called section status so you can create separate sections for your design inside figma and you can determine which section is ready to go for development or production and which designs are still work in progress. So this will help developers identify only the designs which are important for them and not have to look at an entire design file. There will also be a proper plugins panel only for the dev mode on the right. So right above the code, developers will be able to see GitHub integration, Storyblocks integration, VS Code integration. So whatever cool developer friendly integrations that there are or will be in the future, I will come as a separate plugins panel on the right. There is now an official VS Code plugin which is very clean to use for developers. So while they are programming and coding, they can see all the updates and changes that you have made live so that they don't miss out on any changes later and they can keep up with your design cycle as well. Second biggest update is variables. And this is going to be super useful for designers like us. We can set different variables to different design elements. So if there is a card and we create a dark mode and a light mode, we can set the variable as dark. And whenever we want we can switch between dark and light and this is literally bringing design tokens to our design practice as well so if you're not used to using design tokens or creating design tokens for design systems this will be so much more useful variables can also have different properties based on different screen sizes so if you have a screen size which is a desktop and a mobile the variable will act differently for different screen sizes as well and it will adjust based on those screen size this is focused more towards iteration design choices for designers. So unfortunately, this feature is only for most of the paid plans and you won't get it in the free plan after a certain period of time. Ah, that's sad advanced prototypes. Now this got me excited because I love prototyping and interactions as you guys know. So advanced prototypes bring in booleans and if else statements to animations and interactions. So if you have a disabled button, you can set it to if the button is disabled, there will be no interaction on this button. Otherwise, if the button is active, there will be this interaction. So there is a if else kind of statement conditions so as to say that you can give to your animations as well. So a certain animation will work differently on a different screen. A certain animation might not even exist on a different screen. You can even change content inside your designs based on these conditions. So if you click on a button, you can literally change text in a paragraph if that is what is a feature of your design or your app. There are also mathematical counters now. So if you want to create, say, a calculator, a calendar or a counter, it can automatically create a unlimited counters for you without having to manually design much. There'll also be new actions, except for just the click and hover. You will now see one or two more actions coming in into play as well. So really looking forward to try it out in detail myself. And you guys already know I will be posting a full video on each of these features. So make sure you subscribe and hit the like. Another cool thing is that you can preview these animations while you are editing or making them. You know how the final effect will look like and based on that you can make your decisions. Unfortunately, again, this is in the pro plan. So not even your basic paid plan will get it. If you're under the professional plan, then you can get these advanced animation features. Biggest auto layout update ever because this is super useful. 
Auto layout now is responsive truly with three new essential settings one is max width one is min width and the third one is a wrap yes earlier we had to create multiple rows and columns now you can just set it to wrap and based on the screen size the elements will wrap to the second or the third line immediately so now you don't have to worry about responsive layouts with auto layout anymore and yes if you want a certain element to only stay a certain size you can set a max and min width with as well so one when you adjust the screen size it will only adjust to that level and nothing more or nothing less oh a better font picker i've always wanted a proper font picker and finally we have this in the next big update figma will now allow you to see all the fonts with their own font styles and their font families so if there is a cursive font you'll see the font as cursive if there is say impact you'll see the impact font and not just a simple written name you will also see a nice little new font label in front of any font that you have recently installed so this will give you a better clarity as well and the best part about this update is that categories are finally here so for each font pair or font category you can create different tabs so one tab will have your favorite fonts the other tab might have your frequently used fonts or a third tab which will have a project based font only you can name your own categories there are some pre built categories for you but again super duper useful feature one of the most useful features for today for me let me know in the comment which is for you another big but underrated feature again is a much better file search from inside your figma file so you don't now have to leave your figma projects to search for another figma file from inside your figma file you can see 10 other projects search for those projects or components or elements another cool update is that figma has finally officially introduced their new blog called shortcuts this blog will have all the figma updates it will have any podcasts interviews videos and even courses that they keep on updating on youtube on one single platform called shortcuts i'm keen to see if they integrate community with shortcuts and of course finally there are a lot of small minor changes just to integrate the new changes into figma's platform and i'm sure they're working in the background for better performance and less data use etc so again super excited about this update let me know down in the comments which is your favorite one i'll see you every week same time same place until next time take care god bless